Get Real with Dr. Neil. And we're going to talk through why vulnerability is important and um, some of the things that you might want to know as a storyteller or just a general person in the world about being vulnerable. Hi, my name's Ben Pawson. I'm the Director of Development at First Person Arts. And with me is... I'm Dr. Neil Bardhan. I'm the Director of Applied Storytelling at First Person Arts. So how do you approach vulnerability as a storyteller? Well, uh, let me first ask you a question. How are you defining vulnerability? I think it's that uneasy feeling in your stomach when you know you're putting yourself out there. Yeah, I think of it as um, choosing to let people in on something that's a bit challenging emotionally or um, something that you're still working through or something that you're not necessarily comfortable revealing at the moment. Yeah, that working it through thing. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's been huge for me. And you kind of know when you, when you are giving it up and stepping out there. I think someone I've read called going out on the wire. You know, oh, you're, yeah. you're a little bit unstable, but you're balancing and you know you're crossing to hopefully a better place. Yeah, how do you personally go about opening yourself up? You know, what's the process of prying off the lid? Yeah, one of the things that I've been thinking about recently is how listeners don't know our internal state in a story unless we tell them in some way, right? So it's saying, I was nervous during that job interview. The person interviewing you might have, might have seen it, might not. You might have confidently explained the job interview afterwards to somebody, but uh, at the heart of it, you were nervous about it. And your audience, uh, you know, and we're talking about performed storytelling here uh, and, and, and written storytelling as well. If you don't tell your audience you're nervous, how are they going to know? Yeah. You don't come with subtitles. Right. Or a narrator in the corner. Right. Sign language. That yeah. would be handy. Inclusive. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I did a story that didn't get picked. Um, unfortunately, and I did it for the staff team, the, the thing. And the only comment that Neil made was, tell me more about that one emotion you mentioned <laughs> during your story. That's where the interesting stuff is, I think. Write, revise, repeat. Mm. So this is a tip that we often give storytellers and we often find storytellers using is write, revise, repeat. H how does that figure in, in your storytelling? Uh, in my personal storytelling, when I'm, when I'm sharing something, uh, it, it looks a, a couple different ways. Uh, one of them is revising simply the written text and, and looking back at it and saying what, what sounds good out, out loud to myself, what doesn't. Uh, the other version of that is after I've told a story out loud, um, I can, uh, to an audience that is, I can go back and say, you know, that sentence looks great on paper, but I never want to say it out loud, it turns out, in front of other people, so let me massage it around a little bit. And, and that's true on the, on the micro level of you know, words and sentences, but also on, on a, a larger scale as well. And how often do you find yourself you know, reading from the page? I, part of my process is often writing out a whole story and then can semi-memorizing it, let's mm -hmm. call it, right? Like a semi-homemade recipe. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know the order, I have some phrasing that I'll stick to, but I'm not I'm not rehearsing it like it's Shakespeare. Yeah, yeah. I, I took the one story that I did, I, I wrote it all out, got rid of the parts that weren't working, and then condensed it down to bullets. Yeah. And kind of rehearsed with those, and kind of did a few performances to my um, laptop camera, and then went through the very painful process of watching myself and listening to myself, and yeah. after I'd, you know, gotten over the fact that I sounded like a blethering idiot most of the time. Yeah, edited that down. So I've never seen you do improv, but hmm. I hear it's something that you do a lot of. I, I do perform improv, yep. Mm -hmm. um, improv scares me. I don't think my mind is fast enough. Um, what is it that, that kind of draw you, drew you to improv and how does that relate to storytelling? Oh, interesting. Um, I got interested, I would say, in parallel to uh, I got interested in improv and storytelling in parallel with each other. So my brother actually took an improv class aimed at improv for scientists. And this was at a time when I was, I was a scientist myself and I was thinking about how do we communicate science. Um, and then on this parallel track, I was listening to storytelling podcasts and thinking about how people put on a, a little solo stage show about something true in their lives. Um, and that was different than the scripted theater that I'd done in, in high school and, and college. And so I thought, okay, well, there's 
something about being responsive to the moment that you're in and just letting your mind you know, go free with you know, loose constraints, but also a supportive environment. Um, so that's on the improv hand. And then on the uh, storytelling hand, it's how do you prepare for a show? How do you think about what you want to share with people about yourself? Mm. Let's come back to the you in scripted theater during Ooh. high school and college in another video. Vulnerability is something that for better or worse um, may in your opinion be associated with um, women and men are strong and invulnerable. Mm. Um, is that something that you have found in your work? Yeah, to an extent. I think what often is the case is that people people know what they know, right? Um, they have their role models. They have their understandings of what does it mean to to be on stage, to tell some uh, tell a story from their life. Uh, lots of people are very. This event happened, and then this event happened, and then this event happened across gender, and it's it's about the environment that they're in and what are the stakes of, of sharing vulnerably. Yeah, stakes. I mean, it's one of the most important things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it's something that we recommend quite a lot. That's right. Show us what the stakes are. Yeah. What's in it for you? Why were you out there? Was something yeah. at risk? Yeah. yeah. So not a gendered construct. Something else we're going to talk about in this series of videos is getting people to open up um, about difficult subjects. Mm -hmm. And this also ties into one of the tips about finding the funny um, wherever you can, even mm -hmm. in something that can be hard. Um, what, have, what have we learned from uh, projects like Trigger, where we talk about gun violence and the round table of young men there? Yeah, um, just how humanizing this all is, right? And how um, the phrase that we use at First Person Arts a lot is unique and shared experiences. And that, just surfaces in so many different ways. Um, and you can see it emerge in a room of strangers sometimes where they're they're watching a video of a story, right, in Trigger, or they're hearing somebody tell a story 10 feet from them, and you get a little percolation around the room of, oh yeah. yeah. Um, people like to see themselves in others. Mm. And I think that's one of the things that's most surprising in our work sometimes is how people um, discover discover the connections that exist in this world that they, they didn't expect to be there. Unexpected connections. We're looking so very good today because of our very gracious hosts, Ground Floor Studios and Chatterblast Media, who have donated the time in their amazing studio down here in Center City. Um, check the link in the bio.